Hi everyone, I'm Taylor. Today we're talking about two of the most common treatment methods for sleep apnea, CPAP and BiPAP. These terms often get conflated and used interchangeably. And to be fair, CPAP and BiPAP more or less perform the same function, just with slightly different mechanisms. So let's break down CPAP and BiPAP to help you learn more about both therapies. CPAP stands for Continuous Positive Air Pressure, and here's how it works. Your CPAP machine rests on a nightstand or a bedside table and uses a fan to draw in air from your bedroom. That air is then pressurized to a specific setting. You'll also wear a CPAP mask that either covers the nose and mouth or just the nose. The mask forms an airtight seal around these openings. And lastly, a connective hose links the machine to your mask. This helps ensure that you get enough air throughout the night. If there are any air leaks, you may not get enough pressure and the CPAP therapy might not be effective. Pressure is measured in centimeters of water, or CMH2O, and most CPAP machines can be programmed between 4 and 20 centimeters of water, with the average person needing about 8 to 10. Since you'll need a prescription for your CPAP therapy, you won't be able to change the machine's pressure level yourself. Instead, your doctor will monitor your therapy to make sure it's effective. If not, they can recommend more or less pressure. Now that we've covered CPAP, let's talk BiPAP. What are the similarities between CPAP and BiPAP? Well, pretty much everything I just described. You'll need a machine, face mask, and connective hose for the therapy. The therapy involves essentially the same process of receiving pressurized air from the machine throughout the night. So what's the difference? Well, the Bi and BiPAP stands for bi-level. This means you'll receive one pressure level when inhaling and a different pressure level when exhaling. Most BiPAP users receive more pressure when breathing in and less pressure when exhaling. Both pressure levels are prescribed by your doctor, so you won't be able to change these either. Another difference is pressure range. BiPAP machines can usually be programmed between 4 and 30 centimeters of water. This means people with severe sleep apnea symptoms who need a relatively high pressure level may need BiPAP therapy. It's worth mentioning that only the machine is programmed for continuous or bi-level positive air pressure. You can use the same mask and connective hose for CPAP and BiPAP therapies. So if your doctor recommends switching from one to the other, you won't need to invest in a bunch of new equipment, just the machine. Many people feel comfortable with a lower pressure level when exhaling and a stronger pressure for inhaling. This is why BiPAP is often preferred over CPAP and its fixed pressure level. That said, some people don't mind using one pressure level for inhaling and exhaling, so the higher cost of BiPAP therapy might not be worth the investment. The average CPAP machine costs between $500 and $1,000, BiPAP machines typically start at $1,700 and some cost as much as $3,000. But your insurance may not cover the cost of a BiPAP machine unless your CPAP therapy fails and your doctor wants to prescribe a different type of therapy. Cost and comfort are important considerations, but the bottom line, both CPAP and BiPAP have proven effective at treating sleep apnea. Which one is better will probably come down to your personal preferences. Now there is a third type of positive air pressure therapy we're going to briefly touch on, automatic positive air pressure or APAP therapy. APAP machines automatically adjust pressure levels based on your breathing patterns. So your pressure levels don't only change for inhaling and exhaling, but also whenever the machine detects high resistance levels in your breathing. Studies show people use APAP therapy longer each night compared to CPAP or BiPAP. The automatic adjustments typically translate to more comfortable breathing throughout the night. However, APAP machines tend to be pretty expensive, even compared to BiPAP machines. People with minor to moderate sleep apnea may see improvement of their symptoms by making lifestyle tweaks. These include sleeping on your side to open up the airway more, avoiding drinks and sedatives before bed that can cause breathing muscles to relax and not perform properly, using an anti-snoring mouth guard to slide your jaw forward or hold your tongue in place, and quitting smoking. However, some people simply need CPAP or BiPAP therapy to address their sleep apnea symptoms. Talk to your doctor if you're a heavy snorer, or if you wake up gasping for air, or if you experience any other symptoms of sleep apnea. So a few takeaways, CPAP and BiPAP therapies are pretty similar. They both treat sleep apnea using the same type of equipment, which delivers pressurized air into your breathing passages. CPAP pressurizes air at a fixed level, which you may find uncomfortable, especially when exhaling, but CPAP machines tend to be more affordable. With BiPAP, you'll get two different pressure levels, one for inhaling and another for exhaling, and the machine's pressure range is wider. However, BiPAP machines usually cost much more than CPAP machines, and your insurance may not entirely cover this purchase. To learn more about the differences between CPAP and BiPAP, head on over to sleepfoundation.org. And if you want to learn more about what CPAP therapy is in the first place, check out our video all about that right here. Thanks for watching. Sweet dreams, everyone.